So creating custom arrows in Golang is pretty straightforward, right? You just implement the standard error interface. But how would you actually check if the error is your error, your custom error, or a standard predefined error? And this is where the errors module comes into place to basically simplify your life whenever you deal with errors. And this is why in this video we're going to have a look at the errors module in Golang to really tame your errors. Additionally, it's also important to note that since Golang version 1.23, there has been an error check as well in these errors functions, but more on that later. So let's maybe start from the beginning here. How is actually an error defined in Golang? Now, every single error in Golang is pretty much defined through the error interface. So we can basically make use of this interface to also create our own custom errors. So with that in mind, let's maybe create a new struct and we call this struct no text error. Now I will actually give you some context about this error in a minute here. And then we define this type as a struct. Now this struct contains a field, which we name message, which is of type string. And this is just error message. Now we've actually created this struct here, which is pretty solid so far. So let's create a bit more context, what we actually want to do. So what we want to do is to just load a file, right? And we do not want to load files that are no TXT files. So that really means that we do not want the user of this function to basically load non TXT files. All right, and let's create a simple function called load file. And this load file function takes in a file name, which is of type string, and it returns a tuple where the first element is a string and the second one is an error, right? This is pretty conventional in the language Golang here, right? And for now, we just return the file name and nil. So that basically means whenever we load the file, we always return the file name if the file was successfully loaded, right? This is not really best practice because obviously there should be something much more descriptive than just returning the file name, right? But for now, I will leave it as it is, right? Let's quickly make use of this function, our main function by just calling it here. And then we, I don't know, say go.mod. Now, obviously this file should not load because it's not a TXT file. And then in the end, we just print line for now the file name and also the error itself, if there is any error. All right, and let's maybe look at the definition of the error interface, right? How can we do this? We basically just go to the standard definition of the error interface here. And there we go, we basically see the error interface. Now, it is really straightforward, right? There is no magic going on. This is the only interface you need to kind of create your custom errors in Golang. And I've made a separate video about Golang interfaces, so feel free to check out this as well. But all we need to do is basically to implement this error function here, right? That is basically it. And then it satisfies automatically this error interface. So let's quickly get to this. So what we do is just basically define this error function here, which returns a string, and then we just return the message. It's that simple, right? And now our no txt error struct satisfies the error interface, and therefore it is a custom error. So let's implement this load file function here. So obviously the first condition would be to just check if the file ends with a dot txt. Right now, obviously there are much better ways for checking the type of a file, but this is a pretty straightforward and simple solution for now. So let's implement this. So we do a simple if condition here, and then we make use of the strings module and we call the function has suffix, and then we make use of the file name, and then we say dot txt. Now what this does is as the function actually describes it, it is similar to a ends with functionality, right? So it always checks the end of this first string here with the second string. So that basically means when our file name is go.mod file, it tries to evaluate this second string in the end of our file name string. But if this does not exist, it basically returns false. And then we obviously negate this function. So whenever there is no sort of .txt file ending here, we want to return our custom error. 
right? So that means that we return just an empty string and then we return no txt error and the message is basically some sort of error message we can use, right? So something like this, opening none txt files not allowed. All right, now after that, if the file actually is a txt file, we just say f error, and then we obviously want to check if the file even exists, right? So we do os.open, and then we want to open the file name. Now, if there was an error, right? So if the error is not equal to nil, we just return an empty string again, and then the error itself. And in the end, we obviously want to close this file to just free up some resources and memory resources of our application, right? So this is a really simplified version of loading a file or trying to see if a file exists and also is a txt file, right? Obviously there's a lot of things we can improve on that and I will make a separate video about just file handling in Golang because it's such an important topic. All right, so let's see what actually happens if we run this code, right? Let's just try to open our Go Dot mod file here. Let's say go run main.go. And what we got is an empty string and the error is opening non-txt files not allowed, right? So we actually retrieve here our own custom error. So let's see what if we actually have a txt file, right? Because we do this check in the beginning, so this error will be skipped. So we say maybe go.txt. And then we say go run main.go again. And now we actually have a go standard error, right? Open go.txt, no such file or directory. Because obviously this file does not exist. So we've kind of made use now of a custom error, but also of standard errors, right? So how can we differentiate between these two errors? And the magic really comes with the errors module. So we're going to make use of that right now. So the first thing I actually want to demonstrate is the errors.is functionality. And as the function actually describes it pretty well, errors.is just returns true if the error is of a specific type. Right? So we can check, for instance, if the error is the open error, the open file error. So let's quickly do this here. So what we could do is if errors.is, right, it's that simple. And then the error, we say error. And then the target error might be os.error not exist, right? So the error not exist describes the error we've seen before where the file or directory does not exist, right? So if errors is if the error is actually error not exist we just print line something and we say file does not exist something like this and else right if it is not an error not exist error we just print line unexpected error just for now so let's quickly recap here what the errors.is function actually does it actually just checks if the error is equal to another error right it's that simple there's no magic going on. And the wonderful thing as well in the errors.is function since Golang version 1.23 is that there's also a error is equal to nil check here, which is quite convenient, especially if you deal with a lot of errors in Golang. All right, so let's quickly run this code. So what we got now is the output file does not exist, right? Because obviously go.txt does not exist. So let's quickly look at go.mod again. And if we run this, we get unexpected error because the function actually did not return an error not exist error. It actually returned our custom error. Now actually to demonstrate that this function really works, right, the load file function really works, we can also take in a, an existing test.txt file. And then we can run it again. And obviously there is an output that says unexpected error, but we expect this, right? Cause we always print this unexpected error here, but we've seen that the string is not null or not empty. So it is actually the file name. So the function actually works. So let's get back to our go.mod file. Now, the thing is, we also do want to check if the error is our custom error, right? How can we actually achieve this? I mean, we could make use of the errors.is function but if we do this, right, so let's quickly simulate this here. If errors.is and then error, 
and then we say no txt error and then we need to define the content in here right so the message which is not really good right so we need to copy the error message and it just looks pretty ugly and there is a better way than doing this and the magic function we are going to look at now is the errors.as function now the errors.as function is a bit more complicated than this errors.is function but all it does is it basically checks if an error can be casted to another error right or to some sort of struct or to any type so let's maybe get rid of the unexpected error here right and then we say else if errors dot as and then we expect the error itself which is error again and then the target is any right and the thing is we cannot only like insert no txt error here right this does not work we actually do want to make use of pointers in this case so errors.as requires a pointer because actually this errors.as will be assigned, right? So the error will be assigned. So whatever we kind of pass into as a second parameter to this function, it will be used as the error, right? And it will be filled in as the error. So what does that mean? For instance, we can declare a no text error here and then it is a pointer, right? Of type no text error. And what we can do, is just pass in no text error as a reference, right? And what this errors.as now does, it kind of converts this error here to a no text error, right? Although we didn't really initialize this no text error, it gets now initialized through this errors.as function whenever the error is castable to the no txt error struct. So what we can do, if the error is of type no txt error, we can kind of print the message of our no text error, right? So we can say no text error dot message, and this will be it. So if we run this now, we get the text error, which is what we actually expect, right? Opening non txt files not allowed. So to recap here again, the errors.as function just kind of checks if the error is castable to the no text error struct. And if it is the case, it also manipulates this pointer here and it fills in the data directly of our original error to this no txt error, right? So we can make use of the message field in the struct. And there are obviously a lot of use cases, right? So for instance, a common use case would be to make use of the is and as functions for a logger for instance right and i might make a video about creating a custom logger in golang as well so in the end errors can be pretty beautiful now if that all really sounds new to you then i highly recommend watching this 15 minute crash course where i basically tell you everything you have to know about the programming language golang anyway thank you so much for watching have a lovely day and bye bye